Howdy. Let's take a look at this first problem that deal with uh, things moving down like a circular chute. And you're going to see a couple of these on some old exams. So taking a look at number one, it says that in a manufacturing facility, boxes are placed at rest on a conveyor belt which carries them around a circular path of radius r. After traveling a quarter of a circle, that's pi over two radians, they slide down a chute. The conveyor belt starts at rest, and when the box is placed on uh, its motor supplies a torque, <laughs> it supplies a torque so that the belt has an angular acceleration alpha of C1t. In part A, what will be the velocity of the box when it reaches the chute? Okay, so this, we derived in the previous video, is my total velocity. Now we're going to find vr and v theta, the r and the theta component of my velocity. Now vr is equal to dr dt. And what this is saying is, is the radius of my circular motion changing with respect to time? And it isn't. It's a circle with a constant radius, and so that's zero. Now as for v theta, v theta is equal to r omega where your r, your radius, is given to be capital R, and I don't know what omega is, but I know what alpha is. I know that omega is equal to the integral of your alpha, which will be the integral of C1t, which is going to be C1t squared over 2. And so this omega is going to be C1t squared over 2. Now I've got a small issue though right now. The small issue is I've got R, perfect. I've got C1, beautiful. What's T? What's time? The time that it takes to travel pi over two radians, okay? Remember, and don't panic since you're not given a calculator or numbers, you gotta make sure your final answer is in terms that are given or known. So what I need to do is I need to find the time that it takes to go pi over two radians. And in order to do that, you need your theta, which will be the integral of your omega, which the integral of this is C1t cubed over 6, and you need this equal to pi over 2. I want to see how long does this function take to get to pi over 2 radians, and now I can solve for t. t would simply just be, let's see, that would be a 3. I'd have a 3 pi over C1 and it'd be the cubed root of that. That would be your time. And so now that you have that, now I can have v theta. v theta is going to be r c1 over 2 times basically all of this to the 2 thirds. So this is the cube root of it. The cube root of anything squared is going to be 3 pi over c1 to the 2 thirds. Now, if you want your total velocity, magnitude of your total velocity would be the square root of your vr squared plus your v theta squared. However, since our vr is zero, the square root of v theta squared is simply just v theta, and so it's just equal to this. It's your r c1 over 2 times 3 pi over c1 to the 2 thirds. Let's take a look at part B. Part B says, what will be the force exerted on the belt um, on a box as a function of time starting when the box is placed on the belt, assuming the box does not slip? So if you want your total force, what F total is going to be, total, the magnitude, I guess, of F total, is going to be the square root of FR squared plus F theta squared. So what I need to do is I gotta find fr and I gotta find f theta. Fr is equal to m times a r, which is gonna be m times my a r that's this right here. It's your d two r dt squared minus r omega squared, and my f theta is gonna be m times a theta, which is going to be m times, and here's my a theta, 
it'll be 2 dr dt omega plus r alpha. We already know that dr dt, therefore, of course, the second derivative of r with respect to t is 0. Right? Your radius isn't changing. So we know that's 0. We already know that r is equal to r. We already know omega is the c1 t squared over 2. We know alpha is going to be the c1 t. And so now just plug everything in. What we get is that fr is equal to a negative m capital R omega squared c1 t squared over 2 squared f theta is equal to m and then times r alpha so r times alpha which is c1t and then we already know that the magnitude of your total force is going to be your fr squared plus your f theta squared. Finally let's take a look at part c. Part C, it says, if the coefficient of friction between the box and the belt is mu, what's the largest value that C1 can be for this device to work? Once again, no algebra, please. And what I would need is I need my force of friction, uh, in essence, to equal M times A total, which, of course, is just F total. Now, your force of friction is mu mg, which is equal to m times a total. And so we would need, let's see, we need this. What is uh, the coefficient large value of c1? So I'm going to say this needs to be true. We know that a total would be the square root of a r squared plus a theta squared. And we already know what a r and a theta is. A r, okay, we found that out earlier. That's your negative r omega squared, c1 t squared over 2 squared. And your a theta is going to be r alpha. So it's going to be r c1 t. So in this situation, all you need to state is that your force of friction is equal to m times a total. And of course, if I wanted to, I could have canceled out those m's. Uh, a total is the magnitude of your total acceleration, so your a r squared plus a theta squared. And fortunately, in part b, we already found a r, and we already found a theta.